In this lesson we're going to be solving some more word problems that relate to systems of linear equations. Uh, just a quick refresher, a reminder of some skills that you would have covered in grade 9, but actually you would have learned well before that. We've got some geometry, so what happens when we have in this case, and I want to make sure that's very clear, what happens if we have a couple of parallel lines and then we cross those parallel lines with a straight line. So in this first case, when we do that, we have what are known as alternate angles. We have the angle A and the angle B. This is sometimes referred to as the Z pattern. In this case, my Z is backwards, but you can see it there. So when you have that Z pattern, the angles, the uh, alternate angles are equal. So the angle A is equal to the angle B. Then you can also have corresponding angles. So as you can see, in this case, I've cut across here, and the angle A is on the bottom right-hand side of, of this line of intersection, and the angle B is on the bottom right-hand side. So those correspond, and they make up what's known sometimes as the F pattern. And again, my F is backwards here. Oh no, no, my F is forwards this time. So you can see there's that F pattern, and same thing is true here. In this case, A is equal to B. So in both cases, the angles are equal. I think I'm going to mention one other here, because it is worth pointing out, which is, what if I also put in an angle C? Now in this case, these are interior angles and the pattern that they form is actually coincidentally the letter C and so in that case when that happens you end up with the relationship that let's see where I'll just put it underneath here A plus C they add up to be 180 degrees okay so those are just that should just be a review for you just to remind you of some things you've seen before and then moving on, if we have two straight lines and they intersect at a point, the angles across from each other are going to be equal. So in this case, angle A is equal to angle B. And if we have two straight lines that cross each other, um, any straight line itself is made up of 180 degrees. So it also stands to reason that a and C, even though they've been separated by this line coming in, it's still part of a straight line. So in this case, we still have the relationship that A plus C is equal to 180 degrees. And so I just remind you of that because in some of the problems we're going to be looking at, they are going to be dealing with some geometry that calls upon some of these facts that you've learned before. So our first exercise or our first example you can see that I do have two parallel lines to start and they are crossed by another straight line and we're being asked to find the values of X and Y. So certain things are going to or certain uh, angles are going to match up the way that I described previously. The first thing you might see, well, there's a number, you could approach this a number of different ways so I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to go ahead and fill it in as I see it. The easiest thing I see is the fact that I've got a number here and obviously in order to get anywhere with this I'm going to have to make use of this number. This number, this 58 degrees, corresponds to this angle and if I wanted to think in terms of the thing I see here is I, th I see the F pattern that would mean that that angle is equal to this angle. So I've marked them both with a, a red uh, arc. But across from this red arc that I've drawn here, well this is an opposite angle and so those are also equal to each other. So that means that everywhere that I've drawn this red arc, and I'll actually I'll put it here as well, all of these places that I've drawn this red arc are equal to each other. And let's take a look, I'll just switch colors here let's look at this 3x plus 2y maybe I'll move that away a little bit so now I'm going to use a double arc to represent that angle 
So we know that opposite angles are equal, so that would mean that this is equal. What else do we know? From the F pattern, we go down here and we could say that this is equal and we could say that this is equal. That Well, no other angles are equal to this 3x plus 2y. But the last thing I'm going to point out to you, so really that didn't add any useful information, but the last thing I'll point out to you is that between, and I'm not going to make this really big, between here and here, that is a straight line. So this must add up to 180 degrees. So we can make use of that relationship, the fact that they're supplementary angles. So that does allow us to put together a couple of equations. The first equation is going to be that this red angle is equal to 2x plus, or sorry, 2x minus y. But this red angle is also equal to 58 degrees. So I can actually write 2x minus y is equal to 58. Now I could write this as 58 degrees. I'm going to drop the, the degree symbol for now because if you start writing the degree symbol you have to carry that through everything that you're doing. So I'm just going to ignore units and that's something we quite commonly do but I have to make sure and if I'm going to ignore units as I work I need to write a concluding statement that brings the units back in to the work that I'm doing. So that's my first equation. My second equation is going to be that these two angles, 2x minus y and 3x plus 2y, they have to add up to be 180 degrees. So 2x minus y, that's the first angle, so I'm going to put that in brackets, plus the second angle, 3x plus 2y, equals 180 and instead of degrees I'm just going to leave that as 180. Your preference, you can put degrees in there just be careful if you put degrees in you have to make sure you carry those through the whole way. Okay, I wonder if I might not be maybe I'm making that more confusing by doing it that way so degrees are not such a burden to write in so you know what let's go ahead and carry those symbols with us. I'm going to have to simplify this equation number two so I have 2x, the numbers in front of each of these brackets is 1, so it wasn't really important for me to put them here, but I'm just trying to be quite careful about how I represent things. I have a 2x plus a 3x, that's equal to 5x. I have a negative y plus 2y is going to give me positive 1y is equal to 180 degrees. And I think actually I'm going to call that equation 2. I didn't really do anything particularly special yet. We've got choices. We're not going to graph these. We're not going to solve by graphing. We're going to solve either by substitution or elimination. And I see immediately I've got a positive y, positive 1y here. I've got a negative 1y here. So if I rewrite equation number 1 underneath, 2x minus y is equal to 58 degrees. And very readily, I can now take equation number two and subtract equation number one. Uh, nope, it's going to be adding equation number one because these signs are opposite. So this is what we're going to eliminate. And because these signs are opposite, I have a positive y and a negative y. So if I just add those together, that will eliminate them. So I end up with 5x plus 2x, that's equal to 7x positive y added with negative y is equal to zero. Remember I'm adding everything vertically and then 180 plus 58 is 238. And in order to solve this for x, divide by 7, divide by 7, and I end up, the reason I did that was so I'd end up with 1x and then I'm going to have, let's see, well, 7 would go into 21 three times, which means 7 would go into 210 30 times. And there'd be 28 left over. It goes into 4, so that would be equal to 34. I'm just going to double check my arithmetic. 28, 210, 28. Yes, so x is equal to 34, but don't forget this was degrees divided by 7. This is not degrees. It's just a number. This is, has units of degrees, so my answer here is x equals 34 degrees. 
Now I'm going to sub that value for x equals 34 degrees into, now which of these equations lends itself better to solving for y? Um, this one at least has y as a positive y, equation number two, whereas equation number one has it a negative. Equation multiplying by five is fine, multiplying by two is fine. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it into equation number two. So I end up with five multiplied by 34 degrees plus y is equal to 180 degrees. So I'm using this equation right here. 5 times x becomes 5 times 34 degrees plus y equals 180. 5 times 34 is equal to 170 degrees plus y is equal to 180 degrees. And so we end up with y equals and 180 minus 170 is equal to 10 degrees. And that's it. I've got my solution. Determine the values of x and y. Don't really even need a therefore statement here. It's very clear and because I've kept my units in, really, there's my first answer and there's my second answer. Another thing I want to point out about this question is that some of you may have saw other ways that you wanted to approach this. For example, some people might like to say, well, I can figure out what this angle is because there's a 58 degrees here and then this one's going to be 58. Uh, we've got X's and Y's, so let's call this Z. You might say, well, Z plus 58 degrees must add up to 180 degrees, which means that Z is equal to 180 minus 58, which is equal to, what is that going to be? 180 minus 60 would be 120, so that's 122 degrees. And if this is 122, then that means that this equation, that means all the blues, the, the double blue arcs are 122. So then we could have done something along the lines where we say, or we could have ended up with the equation 3x plus 2y is equal to 122 degrees. And we would somehow combine that. So I'll, let's call that equation 3. That's a valid equation. And we would somehow combine that with, I guess, equation 1. Well, in its current form, that wouldn't help us. But we could take equation 1 and multiply it by 2. And we end up with 4x minus 2y is equal to 116 degrees. I've, I'm Once again, I'm going to eliminate my y terms. Notice I had to multiply the equation by 2 to get these y terms lined up. So let's call that equation 4. And then I'm going to take equation 3 and add to that equation 4 and I end up with 7x that becomes 0 122 becomes 222 becomes 232 becomes 238 degrees which is I just wanted to do the math honestly there as you'll notice this equation and this equation even though we arrived at them using different starting points, or at least partially different starting points, we ended up with the same equation, so of course we're going to end up with the same value for x, which we should, which is 34 degrees. So there's just a little bit of reassurance that um, how you go about doing this, so long as everything you're doing is valid along the way, then things will work out just fine. We could, there's a couple of things we could do to, to check this. One check we might do is we might just want to see whether or not these values are reasonable. So our first angle is 2x minus y. 2x minus y is equal to 2 times 34 degrees minus 10 degrees, which is equal to 68 minus 10, which is 58 degrees. 3x plus 2y is equal to 3 times 34 degrees 
plus 2 times 10 degrees. And that's equal to 90 plus 12 is 102 degrees. Plus 20 degrees is equal to 122 degrees. And if you remember, 122, well, that was the angle we came up with here, so that matches. And the other reason why I say we're just checking our answers here, this is not a formal check, this is an informal check, but the angles 58 degrees and 122 degrees, they match up with the numbers that we had to begin with. And because these are angles as part of a straight line, we know that they have to both be less than 180 degrees. So there's a number of ways that we've just verified there that what we've come up with is at least reasonable. It may not still be exactly correct. We know it's correct because of the 58 degrees matching up there. But there are other ways you can check just to make sure your answer makes sense. Okay, moving on to our next example. The coin box of a vending machine contains half as many quarters as dimes. If the total value of the coins is $22.50, how many dimes are there? So in this case, we're obviously interested in quarters and, and the number of quarters and dimes. So let Q represent the number of quarters. And D, the number of dimes. Okay, let's see. Now, this is kind of interesting. We're actually not told how many coins there are in the machine, but we're told it contains half as many quarters as dimes. So that would mean if the machine contained 10 dimes, there'd be half as many quarters, so there'd be five quarters. If it contained 20 dimes, it contains half as many quarters. So the number of quarters is equal to half the number of dimes. That's the relationship. That is our first equation. Sometimes when you read these things you have to puzzle it through. Make sure you understand what it is you're being told. Another way we could have expressed this or we could have said if there are half as many quarters as dimes that's the same thing as saying that there are twice as many dimes as there are quarters. So if we had five quarters we would multiply that by two to get the number of dimes. Why would I choose this one? Or maybe I would just go ahead and change 1 into 2. I'm getting rid of that fraction. That's the only reason. Now, what's this other part? If the total value of the coins is 2250, well, what is the value? First of all, this is in dollars. So we think, what is the value of a dime? A dime is 10 cents, which is 0 0.10 dollars, multiplied by the number of dimes plus 0 0.25, which is the value of a quarter, multiplied by the number of quarters, and those two things together better add up to be the total value. Now, unlike our previous example, I'm not going to keep the units in here. Uh, keeping dollar signs in mathematical work is uh, not something I've ever seen done before, so I'm not going to do it now. I am, however, going to immediately, I'm just going to multiply everything here, times 100 because I just immediately I want to get rid of all those decimals and I may take further steps to reduce things so 0 0.10 times 100 is going to give me 10 dimes plus move over by two decimal places that gives me 25 quarters is equal to 2250 now I take a look at this I can't divide everything by 10 because I would end up uh, turning this back into a decimal, but I can divide everything by 5, so I'm going to do that next. You might be asking, well, how does he know he can divide everything by 5? All of my numbers are either ending with zeros or 5s, and that means it's divisible by 5. When all your numbers end with zeros, that means it's divisible by 10. So 10 divided by 5 is equal to 2. 25 divided by 5 is equal to 5. And 225 divided by 5, if it, if it helps you, what would 225 divided by 10 be? That would just be 225. And then multiply that by 2. So 225 divided by 5 is actually going to be 450. And that's as far as I can reduce this. 
So I'm going to call that equation 3. But I can actually work with that. That's actually really quite reasonable because now if I take a look, I've got d equals 2q and I've got 2d here, so pretty simple arithmetic. And so I'm going to sub equation 2 into equation number 3. And I've actually left myself enough room. I'll just do it right underneath here. So this is going to be 2 times, but instead of d, I'm going to put a 2q. So now I'm not using elimination this time. I'm using a substitution. Plus 5q equals 450. 2 times 2q, of course, is just equal to 4q. Plus 5q is equal to 450. 9q is equal to 450. I divide both sides by 9 and I end up with q is equal to, well 45 divided by 9 is equal to 5 so we've got an extra 0 there that would mean q is equal to 50. So that means there are 50 quarters. We don't actually want to know how many quarters there are. We want to know how many dimes there are. Remember, always go back and reread the question. Make sure you're answering the question as asked. So now I'm going to, I'll come back up here just to save a little bit of space, and I'm going to sub q equals 50 into equation number 2. So d, the number of dimes, is equal to twice as many quarters. So that's going to be 2 times 50. So d is equal to 100. And if you needed to check this, we could do a formal check, left side, right side. Or if you're not being asked to do a formal check, you might just want to do a quick calculation and find out whether or not this makes sense. Um, 50 quarters. And again, I try to do as much of this stuff in my head as possible. But you can use a calculator for this, so take 50 and multiply it by 0.25. So 50 times, let me just change the color, just kind of doing a check here. So 50 times 0 0.25, the way I think of doing that without a calculator is I say, well, what would 5 quarters be? And anybody who's familiar with currency, 5 quarters is $1.25. So 10 times as many would be 12.50. What would 100 dimes be? That's 100 times 0 0.10, and that's equal to $10. $10 plus 1250 is equal to 2250. And if I'm not mistaken, that is how much we started with. 2250 was our total amount. And so you don't need to have done that part, but now we can quite confidently say, therefore, there are 100 dimes and although it doesn't ask for it, and 50 quarters. Now I'm just pointing that out to you, just to remind you. I actually don't recommend you include this. If the question asked, does not ask for a piece of information, unless it's an open-ended question that just asks you to describe the situation, if it, does, if it asks for a specific thing, give it that specific thing and nothing else. Every time that you write extra information like that, you run the risk of even just transcribing it incorrectly. So why would you do that if you've already if you have already achieved the answer they're looking for? Or in this case, that I'm looking for if I'm the one testing you. Okay, last example. A rectangle with a perimeter of 180 centimeters is four times longer than it is wide. So first of all, we have a rectangle. So, and it's four times longer than it is wide. Okay. We know that the perimeter of this rectangle is equal to 180 centimeters. So we're going to make use of that information. I am going to say that x is the width, and that would make the length. Well, this actually. I'm going to show you exactly how we should do this. Very formally, I'm going to say that's x and that's y. What are the dimensions of the rectangle? 
So the equations that we get out of this, you might do a problem like this and not even realize that you're solving a system of linear equations because you come up with one of the equations without even realizing that's what you've done. That's why I, I even stop myself there. So the first thing I want to do is I want to say that the relationship between x and y in the perimeter, well that would mean there's a y here, there's a y here, the total perimeter of this thing is going to be these two sides, these two x's added together, two x's and these two y's added together and they have to add up to be a total of 180 and once again I'm going to drop the units I'll put those back in later. 2x plus 2y equals 180 but I immediately recognize hopefully you do too that these are even numbers so I'm going to divide by 2 divide by 2 and I end up with x plus y is equal to 90. That's a pretty simple equation, kind of a largish number on the end there, but not too complicated. Now what is my second relationship? How do the sides relate to each other? How do x and y relate to each other? It is four times longer than it is wide. That means that y is four times x, and that's equation number two. Some of you may have gone to this step right away. Some of you may have immediately drawn your diagram this way, and you might have just said x and 4x. And if you do this, you're, it's still going to work out. And then you're going to wonder, well, I didn't solve a system of linear equations. For the purposes of this unit, you're going to want to make sure, if possible, that you are thinking in these terms, separate variables. Also, because I've drawn my diagram, I don't have to do my, uh, my let statements. It's very clear what the variables x and y stand for. Okay, so now how am I going to solve this? It looks like the same thing to do is I'm going to sub equation 2. I'm going to sub specifically, I'm going to sub in my value for y into equation 1. So another substitution. This is going to go in here and we end up with x plus, but instead of y we end up with 4x and that's equal to 90. So we end up with 5x total is equal to 90. And then we divide both sides by 5. And we end up with x is equal to uh, 90 divided by 5 turns out to be equal to 18. And now I take this and I sub x equals 18 into equation number 2 and so I end up with y is equal to 4 times x which is 4 times 18 and that gives me y is equal to 4 times 18, 4 times 8 is 32, 4 times 10 is 40 so we end up with 72 and 18 plus 72 is equal to 90 but we double that to go all the way around the perimeter, we end up with 180. What does it want to know? What are the dimensions of the rectangle? Therefore, the rectangle is 18 centimeters by 72 centimeters. Okay, that's it for our lesson on solving word problems using involving geometry and money. Um, and there are other word problems that we haven't been able to cover in tutorial specifically. You, you, there are more than we could ever possibly cover. You just need to read them carefully, declare some variables, play around with the equations, and then work towards a solution.